Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to another video today. So in today's video, I'm going to do a complete guide to automating WordPress publishing inside Active Pieces. I'm going to show you everything that you need to know and by the end of this video, you'll be able to automate your own blog. I'll be covering two types of approach, a form-based approach and a schedule-based approach. We will be using Active Pieces form to create an article based on title. We will be using the schedule based flow to create a post daily and it will be published to your WordPress site automatically. I will show you how to create a long form article using OpenAI GPT model. We will be using Stability AI to generate the image that will be used as a featured image. In addition, we will also generate images and sprinkle it within the article so it's visually appealing to the reader. I will also show you how to use the custom API action and how to extend functionality for an existing piece in active pieces. We will be building the article to include images to publish in WordPress. I'll show you how to set up the feature image as well as upload image media to a WordPress website. And we will be generating post tags and use AI to set the category for the post. So this video is going to be jam packed with information. Feel free to build an, this automation along with me. I'll write some notes while watching. If you're new here, my name is Dennis and I'm a principal software engineer. I make videos on coding, automation, and AI every week. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and click on subscribes as I will have tons of upcoming content in the future. I'll also appreciate the support if you click on the like button on this video. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. All right, so here's what we're going to be doing today. Everything is going to be done inside the Active Thesis environment and we're going to be automating it two different ways the first one is going to be the forms and the second one is going to be the schedule based approach where we're going to be using AI table to store some data both of these workflows are going to be funded through a webhook which is encapsulating the whole automation regarding creation of the article itself and creating the images and then posting to wordpress we're also going to be recording the article in AI table as well for record keeping so we get a record of all the articles that we published to WordPress. So that's what we're doing today. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at aitable.ai real quick. And I've defined a articles list data sheet. I'm just going to go through the different field and their settings so they can kind of have an idea on how to use all of these. So the first one is going to be the article title, which is a single line text. Uh, the second one is I just something that I just added last minute. So if you can remember from my last Neuron Writer optimization video, I made an automation for optimizing articles and also it's going to create some keywords and description based on the, the keyword itself. So the keyword is going to be used for adding more context to the article so that when you have OpenAI create the article, you can include additional information such as what keyword can be used to make, to be included as part of the article. This, the next one is going to be an article where it's going to be a long text. This is where the entire article is going to be stored so we can reference in the future just in case. So we have a backup copy of the article itself. And then once the article has been published to work, it's going to go and insert the actual links here where the article is going to live in your WordPress site. And then I included a, a blog type here. So if I'm running multiple websites such as productivity or travel or different kinds of blogs, I can pretty much store it here. And then later on, I can group it by that blog so that I, then I can easily identify which blog these articles were published to. And lastly, I included the publish date, which will t tell me when that article was published. So that's pretty much the makeup for the AI table. We're going to be using this data sheet so that we can keep track of the articles that we write. This is going to be the end goal. This is what we're going to be the finished product once we finish with the automation. So you're going to obviously have the title of the article and then you're going to have the introduction and then you're going to have multiple sections with H2. So you see the understanding important and then there's another H2 right here. Each of these is pretty much its own section. So each section will have its own subheadings like H3s to talk about the overarching theme in a little bit more details. And if you notice across the entire article, you have some some keywords which are bolded to, to emphasize the importance of those words and then lastly you'll notice there's some images sprinkled across the entire article i'm going to be showing you guys how to do that and how to build this article with images and the different highlights and then subsections and including the intros and conclusion and if you look at the right side you'll see the categories and 
we'll have it pre-selected to select which categories this article is about so we're gonna have ai do that and then we also added the tags which we added and assign it to this article when we write the article we're gonna figure out which tag this article fits best so it's either gonna create a new one or it's gonna pick from the existing ones that we have and then lastly if you notice there's also a featured image so yeah so that's it for the makeup of this article that we're going to be writing in this video let's do a quick demo of what the form-based approach is going to look like so i'm here at ai table and we're going to pick an article that we can write about i'm going to be picking this one and i'm going to be coming into the form this is how the flow is going to look like there's a form piece here that's going to in initiate the trigger and we can navigate to this url once this one gets triggered it's going to do a post request to the webhook URL, and then we're going to be passing in the title more on that in a little bit but the form looks like this it's titled the same way as the flow itself and then it has the title field which is the article itself so that's where we're going to be pasting the article so once we hit submit it's going to go here and make a request let's go ahead and submit this one all right so in a few minutes we're going to see what kind of article it generated so there's an error in the bottom it's probably because the form is still in the beta stages so if there's any errors that pops up along the way just ignore it for now but everything should be running behind the scenes at the moment all right so it's currently running it doesn't really tell you what what is currently running at the moment that's a feature that i would love to see them add in the future is to have a running details of which, which piece are currently running at the moment so you can watch it in real time what's happening behind the scenes as opposed to just spinners so yeah i mean hopefully the active users team is listening and they can add a feature so once the article has been completed we can go ahead and check it out and just right here it, it succeeded i've gotten some fillers before but it still created the article so i think it's just there's some internal error that's happening but it looks like everything completed let's go ahead and take a look at AI table real quick let's go back to articles list you see here they added the time saving techniques for increased productivity including the article body and also the link to the published article so you can also visit that and we'll open it up and see it gives us the actual article itself and then bitch blog and the published date so it filled out a couple of things for us when it's coming from the form so we added a, a new record as well as the included the actual link in the article the, the second flow is triggered by a schedule which is going to be running every day at 7 a.m i say as uh, los angeles time zone and then it's going to look for the record since this one is going to be based on a schedule you'll have to put records ahead of time inside the articles list table and that's how it's going to figure out which titles needs to be created an article for so it's going to be taking a look at the published date so it's going to grab anything that doesn't have the published date yet as those ones are still marked as pending in our case we have a couple of articles that doesn't have an article written for it yet so we can use that one for this example so you can see here this one and two since we're doing it on a daily basis we're only allowing it to write one article for us and then it's going to do it again on the next day so if we're running it today that means it's going to be published today and then on the next day it's going to be running the next one that doesn't have a published date this is going to be how we're going to keep track of what's been published and what hasn't published yet all right so going back to active pieces if you scroll down to the bottom if you do a find records in a table piece we're going to be you're picking the space in the data sheet and if you scroll down i specify my max records of one because we only want to grab only one record and we don't want to create multiple articles so we're just going to grab the first record that meets the criteria for this filter we're adding a filter where we're specifying the publish date which is the last date which has the published date so we're just asking for any record that has a blank blank is a, a function in a table that signifies that the the field is blank this is based on the filter on the ai tables and this is how you check and filter the records to get what you want next thing here is it's gonna be checking for the records if there's any records that was found it's gonna look at the total if it's greater than zero that means there's already an existing record which then we're going to be calling and creating the article for that title and then that that terminates that flow once it gets and finish, finish 
it's going to locate the article or the title that we did create an article for and it's going to update the record with the article and the link and all, all the other information that we see here so here's the flow it's going to be initiated from the webhook triggered and this is going to be the flow responsible for building the whole article and adding images and publishing to word and recording to AI table. I'm completely zoomed out so you can see the entire flow from start to finish. We're going to zoom in real and take a look. So the webhook trigger, obviously it's going to have the URL itself and this is going to be triggered from either the form or it's going to be triggered from the, the scheduled flow. So they're, they're both going to be posting from for this URL. And then we're both that we're going to be passing in the title of the article as well as the record id so since the form submitted the title it doesn't have an idea of what the record id is so the record id is blank it if it comes from the scheduled approach which is going to be triggered from AI table it will have an idea of what record id needs to be processed once it receives the title of the article it's going to go ahead and create the outline of uh, the article using that title so i'm using the gpt4 01 type 25 preview and i'm doing an ask uh, chat gpt and i specified that uh, you are an seo ex expert uh, which i can probably remove because i've defined a professional writer who understands seo very well so i already defined that i don't need to add this but generate a json array of five unique sub -head headline about a blog titled and then this will be the title that's coming from the webhook. And then the array will only contain string items. All headlines should be cohesive and flow within the main theme and article of the article title. Respond with the generated array only without any introduction or quotation marks. If you run that, that GPT prompt, you're going to be given an array of strings. We specified up to five and this should be all cohesive. Uh, the reason why I selected GPT-4 for generating the article is GPT-4 has a better comprehension of the prompt and it does a better job of understanding requirements that we have. So it, it complies with the instructions very well. It works a lot better than the GPT-3.5. So once you get the articles, we're going to create a separate prompt to ask GPT. And this time we're going to be creating the articles tags which is we're also going to be adding as part of this article so i can probably remove this you are an seo expert as i've specified in the system rule that you are a professional writer who understands seo very well so that should suffice as far as being able to give a dialogue a context so it says to create one hashtag that are essential for seo purposes for the article titled and this is going to be the title where it's going to be coming in i specified to only create one hashtag but obviously you can change this one to how many however many hashtags that you want and it says right here to respond with the javascript array of string only with each hashtag separated by double quotes exclude any markdown so when you run this you get an array of hashtag within a single quote and that's what you're going to get right here i specified an array just in case you want to have multiple hashtags so that you can have options in our case we only need one. So the next step is going to be taking those tags and the title and the outlines, and we're going to be parsing it and converting it to a JavaScript object so we can work with it in the near, later part of the, the automation. So as part of the inputs that's going to be provided to the code, we're adding in the create tags from step three and then put the title of the article. And so it's the outline that ChatGPT returned for us. So let's go ahead and expand the code so we can see everything. We have the entry point of the application, which is the code. And then from here, looking at the bottom, I always use these functions when I'm parsing out either the JSON or an array for format. So by passing in the content string. So this one is for the JSON array. We're essentially looking for the square brackets and we're doing an index of it and then we're looking for the last index of the the pair of the square brackets and we're doing a substring for those characters and that's how we can grab the array for that string and then we're returning it we're doing a json.parse to convert that into a, a regular javascript object same thing with the parse json i just kind of included it as i like to use this function for any type of parsing work so just 
include both just in case I need the parse JSON. In this case, I don't really need it, but it's kind of the same thing. So I'm declaring a constant variable where I'm doing a substring. In this case, it's going to be the curly braces. So it's going to look for the start of the curly braces and the ends with a pair of the curly braces. It's just going to strip out everything and just going to grab everything in between those two, those two characters. And then that's for the JSON string and it's going to call json.parse to convert that JSON string into an actual JavaScript object that we can work with. So if we scroll back up to the top, the code is obviously the entry point of the application. You can see that we declared the clean tags, which takes in the input tags and we're just removing the hashtag from it. So it doesn't have those characters and symbols. And then we're converting it to lowercase. So all our tags are in lowercase. And then we're taking that clean tags, right? And when we're parsing an array and we're, we're passing into the function where we can parse the array. And then we're only taking the first three. Sometimes it gives us more than what we need. So this one ensures that we only get the first three tags that comes back from ChatGPT regardless of the result that they provide. So you want to safeguard your application from anything that's unexpected from ChatGPT. So we're assigning that tags array and this is going to hold the tags array. And then we're going to be returning a single object that consists of the title, which is coming from the, the title. All I'm doing here is just removing any white spaces from that title. And for the outline, I'm calling the parse array and, and I'm in providing the inputs that outline parameter. Then for the tags, it's, it's going to be the actual tags array that's been cleaned up and without the hashtags. And the tags comma separated will be the, the same thing with the tags array and it's going to be joined by a comma. So it's going to be a comma separated a string. And the random, we're going to be using the random as the key when we store items in the storage piece. Once we execute the code, it's going to return as the, the tags, which is an array of tags, and then the title single string, and then the random uh, number, and the list of outline that we've parsed out from the outline that was given to us by ChatGPT. So we have an, an array of strings. So that's what we're going to be going over next. We're going to pass it into a loop. So we're passing in the outlines array. And then we're going to go through that list of outlines. I, I got this recipe from one of the templates in active pieces. So they're grabbing the, the partial article using the key and with using the random number. Remember the, ran the random number that we generate from code number four is just an arbitrary number that we're going to be using for our key. And then we'll make sure that the scope is within the flow. Uh, when you first init run this get on the storage, it's going to be undefined as there's no article set yet. So the next piece is going to be the one that's going to be generating the article itself. Once we get that, we're going to be using the previous section as the context for the section that we're going to be building next. I'm using as chat GPT, we're using OpenAI my connection, and then I'm specifying the GPT 40125 preview. And I'm specifying at the bottom, I'm also giving a system instruction here that you are a professional writer who understand SEO very well. I left everything else from the bottom, we left it as default. But the main thing here is the prompt itself, write a section about for this iteration of the outline of the article, we're specifying to write about a section under the main title. So I'm also providing it the title of the blog itself so it, it can give it a better context of what the article is about using that as the basis for what to write about. So it include the two heading three titles, which is H3 with their paragraphs, separate content into a different paragraphs when necessary to make the article easy to read. Any important keywords needs to be highlighted and wrapped into a strong HTML tag. So that creates the highlight for the article. Right here in the bottom, specifying the format of the headlines, I'm specifying the how the article is going to be laid out. So it says right here to format the headlines, bold in italic using HTML tags and following the structure. So the structure here is the first is the H2, which is the main heading of the section and any sub section or title needs to be added from the H3. And then the paragraph is right below it. We're dictating it to follow this format that we've specified. And then for reference, these are the previous sections. Every time it iterates and generate a content, it give it a reference point as to what was previously generated when we first look, look at this loop. 
as we're going through each iteration let's say from the first pass it's not going to have any on the second one it's going to have the previous iterations articles that's going to be added here as a reference when this piece gets executed and gets sent to gpt and then respond with generated content only without the introduction or quotation marks once you execute this you're gonna get a nice h2 heading and then h3 for any sub content and the h3 on the bottom with the rest of the content pertaining to that section so i'm not going to do the the wp username and password it's, that is specific to my blog i'm just pulling it from the storage the next thing we're doing is we're doing a modular so we can test and only generate image for odd numbers it's specifying the index so every time you do an iteration of a loop you get an index the first one's going to be one and then so on and so forth that's what we're using to determine whether this is an odd or even number. So we just only want to generate an image for every other section. Let's go through the true branch. If it's odd number, it's going to create an image for it using stability AI. We're going to be using custom API call instead of text to image. The text to image for some reason is not working. So I have to go and refer to the custom API call to create an image. So I switched to custom API calls. And this allows me to extend and tap into the extended functionality of Stability AI without having to redo my, my API connection to them. So instead of having to pass in the, the Stability AI API key, I don't need to do that as it's already baked in when I use this Stability AI custom API call piece. So instead of having to do that, everything's it's already set since I'm already connected. So let's look at their documentation real quick. I'm at the uh, platform that's ai slash uh, forward slash docs and you can see the documentation. So this is the text to image that ActivePieces is using. Uh, when you go to their text to image, this, this is, is what, what they're using behind the scenes to call and they're passing in the authorization on your behalf. Since we're using the text to image feature, we don't need to pass in any authorization or stability a API key as we're just going to be piggybacking off of the ActivePieces piece. The only thing that's required is the engine ID, which you need to pass in as part of the path parameters. So if you look at here at the top right, you can see here in the path. So API and then generation, and then you need to pass in the engine ID before the text to image resource. So if that's, that's where you need to pass in the engine ID, that's required to make this text to image uh, work. As far as the headers, we can skip all this. If you want Stability AI to respond with an image PNG, then you can change the accept in the header, header parameters to image for slash PNG. By default, it's going to set it to application for slash JSON, and that's going to return a base64 image, which we're going to be using instead of the PNG. Going down to the request body. So this is a schema that you're going to be passing in. It's in the form of application JSON, and there's a height and the width, and also the text prompt. Depending on the engine that you selected, when you make this call, you're limited based on what dimension combination you can use for that engine. For example, for the S SDXL beta, you, it must be between these dimensions as specified here and it cannot be greater than 512. So something to keep in mind when playing around with the different engines. So you're gonna, you might get an error when you specify something that's really not allowed. So you can just put some arbitrary numbers. You have to pick from these selected ones. So you have to do that for the width and the height. For the text and the prompts, you need you need to pass in the prompt. So it accepts as property, text underscore prompts, property which consists of an array, which includes the actual text that you want to specify for that prompt and the weight of that. There's some other parameters that you can also take a look at, such as the configure scale, and then guidance presets, samplers, and so on and so forth. If you want to extend Stability AI's feature beyond what's inside of Active Pieces, you can check out that they also have some additional features such as image to image, where you can transform and create an image off of an existing image. There's also an upscale feature where you can create a high resolution for the high, lower resolution version of your image. Once we receive the base 64 body from Stability AI, we're going to be uploading that media into WordPress. We're going to be passing in the blog URLs as that's going to determine which WordPress site we're going to be uploading this image to. 
and then we're going to be passing in the username and the password. So we're also going to be adding the base64 image, which we received from Stability AI, as well as a section title, as we're going to be using that as a alt text when we construct the HTML tag for this. So let's go ahead and expand this code. The only two dependencies that we're going to be using is the form data, which we're going to be using to add it and include the base64 image as part of the, the form body and also the active pieces, pieces common, which we're going to be using to make an HTTP client request to the WordPress site. So we're deconstructing the variables here on the top. And then the first thing that we're doing here is we're making a call to upload media, which we're going to be passing in the URL, username, password, section title, and the base64 image. And we're, when you call this asynchronous function, we're going to be constructing the URL here on the first line on line number 22. We're specifying the URL and we're adding this forward slash WP JSON and then W2 media. Before we move further in the code, the first thing I'm doing here is I'm creating a hyphenated file name for the section title. So let's go to this code real quick, convert to hyphen. What it does is just make the uh, the title lowercase and then we're going to replace everything except for these characters that specified here such as spaces and we're just replacing those characters with hyphen that's what we're going to be doing to convert that the title into a file name so going back here so we're setting that into a file name constant variable and then from here we can create a form data which we're setting as part of the payload for the body of the request we're sending in the base64 buffer as part of this file. So we're appending the file and we're just grabbing the buffer from the base64 image. I have some additional code here as well that cleans up the code. For instance, if your base64 is a data URI where it includes additional information such as the image PNG and then some other information, it's essentially taking the main bits of the base64 string and that's going to be the base64 itself so it's just doing a little bit, a little bit of cleanup since the base64 string that comes back from stability AI is already clean we don't need to do additional cleanup all we have to do is to grab the buffer from that base64 image and set the base64 and that's what we're using to append the file to this form data is we're adding the, the buffer and then we're specifying the file name that we've generated from the top which is hyphenated then dot png and then we also included the alt text and the caption, which is going to be just the section title for this article. So you do you make a call to HTTP client and there's a, a send request and expecting back a JSON body, which consists of an ID of a string. There's some other stuff that's going to be returned when you make this call, but we're all interested in the ID. When we make this call, we're specifying the HTTP method dot post we're passing in the url as part of the body we're passing in the form a data that we build up on the top which includes the file the alt text and the caption here and as far as the headers we're specifying a content type of multi-part for such form data and with the authentication of basic type and then we're passing in the username and password we're going to be awaiting this function when we make this call and we're going to be setting it to the upload media response, which we're going to be receiving the body with the ID. Once we receive the, the ID from the body, we're going to come back up. And the next part is we're going to need the URL for the media that we uploaded to our WordPress site. We're declaring a media URL constant here, and we're going to be calling this function called get media. We're passing in the blog URL, the ID, username, and the password. When we jump into this function, we're constructing the URL, which we're going to be calling we're going to be constructing the. We're going to be using the blog URL as the the base for that HTTP call, and then we're passing the WP JSON and then W two V two media, and in the ID of the upload image that we uploaded to the WordPress site, we're going to be be making a send HTTP request, and want the source URL body, but obviously there's some additional information as well as part of the response, but we just want the source URL of a string. Is also going to be using to embed to our HTML tag. All right, so we're going to be passing in the method of HTTP GET as we only do want to get and then URL and then the authentication. So we're passing in the authentication type of basic and the username and password. Once we get the immediate response, we're going to get the body and then the source URL. We're going to be appending that blog URL as part of this URL segment. So it's going to return 
only the parts of the URL where that uploaded image was. And then we're going to be just constructing that blog URL forward slash into whatever that URL is. And that forms the full path to where the image live on our WordPress site. So we're going to be returning this call and we're going to return that URL as on the top. We scroll up to the top. That's where we have the media URL. The next part of the process is we're declaring an embed URL content here where we're calling this create embed URL. We're passing the media URL and this section title so we can jump into that. All we're doing here is we're just we're creating an image tag, which includes some additional attributes such as class and the source. We're setting the source to the URL that we just received from the WordPress site. And then we're setting the alt text to be the sections title. And then some other things here as well, such as the width and the height of the image. We can specify that manually as well. Once we have the ID and the embed URL, we're just going to return both of those as, as part of this object. So when we execute this code, we're going to be getting the ID. That means that we successfully uploaded that image because every time you upload an image, you, you generate an, a new ID for that resource. And then the embedded URL, which includes the full URL to the image that was just uploaded. And that includes the HTML. The next part of this path of this flow is going to be we're adding a code here where we can embed the image that we received from the previous step, attach it as part of this uh, section's content. So the inputs, we're going to be passing in the embedded image code. This is the embedded URL, which has the image HTML tag. We're going to be passing in the section content, which is part of the article Let's go ahead and expand this one. So the only dependency that we need for this is the Cheerio library. So we're going to add the Cheerio as a dependency. And then we're going to be declaring it on the top. As always, we're going to have the code. And then we're going to have the section content and the embed image code, the structured from the inputs. And then we're declaring a clean embed code constant here where we're going to be calling these clean embed code. We're going to be passing in the image embedded code. And we're just going to strip out any extra characters we don't need, some extra backs backslashes that was included when we generated that code. So you can see here, if you notice, there's additional backslashes when the HTML was created, as well as some additional characters what we want to remove. So we just want to clean up that embed URL and replace those ones with some backslashes. We're going to be calling this function called insert embed code in content where we're going to be including the embedded code after the h2 of that content we're using Cheerio to load these sections content and we're manipulating and parsing out the h2 and after the h2 we're adding the embedded code which is the image tag for that image and then once we get the html since Cheerio includes the html and the headers and all that information when you make this we're going to have to specifically return just the body of that html and that returns just the article itself with the embedded article image once we execute this you can see here that the h2 is right up on the top and then after that we include the the image tag which includes the full path to where the image was uploaded and then you get the h3 and additional information as part of that this is the better way of adding this information as opposed to doing regular expression and doing a replace and all that. I find it handy to just use the Cheerio library and manipulate the HTML from there and traverse it and include the necessary HTML fragment that you want. After we get the sections code, we're just gonna write that into a storage where we're gonna be appending this article section, including the same key that we have on the top. And then the value is all the HTML that we received from the when we executed the piece from step 14. We're just going to append it here and we just have to make sure that the scope is within the flow and then we're ter terminating it with the new line here. So the next, so the other part of the branch is if it's an even art section. So we're just going to exclude the part where we're generating the image and we're just setting and appending the section to the storage without any images. So that's the other side of the branch here. As we go through the flow, we're going to add a storage piece here. We're just going to get the full article itself. So this is going to include the entire article after we've gone through and done the whole loop. You're going to grab everything from the, the, the different H2s and the H3. We can create an introduction and conclusion. We're going to be using the OpenAI piece and we're going to be using the Ask ChatGPT action. I've selected GPT-4 
as as a model as i find it better as far as being able to interpret the instructions and coming up with an article for it so so all we're adding here is based on this title and the outline that we've come up with from step two i wanted to format each paragraph using html tag i wanted to highlight important keywords by wrapping it in a strong html tag similar to when we are creating content for the each section so this instruction here based on the provided outline we'll write an engaging two to three hundred words introduction that captures the essence of the article setting up the stage for the de detailed this discussion that follows so the instruction should start with the attention grabbing hook and then for the conclusion craft a thoughtful wrap-up consisting of 200 to 300 words to summarize the key points discussed explores the broader implications of these insights and ends with a compelling class closing thought or call to action that resonates with the reader so i'm also dictating it to return the result in a json format with the instruction and the conclusion property so that's it for that i'm leaving everything as default settings the tokens and the temperature we're just going to leave it to just be creative it's going to leave it at 0 0.9 and then once we execute that we're going to get this json string body here which we're going to be manipulating in a little bit to just extract the JSON bits of this response. So the next step here is we're going to be adding a code piece where we're going to be passing in the article body. We're just going to grab the body from step 17 from the storage. You remember here, we're just going to grab the article body. And then we're also going to pass in the introduction and conclusion string that we received from the previous one. So this has the introduction and the conclusion a response from JGBT. So essentially we're passing both of those and this one is just going to build the entire article. We're going to be attaching the introduction and then the article body and the conclusion together in one a full article. So this is going to be the step for that. So let's go and ex expand on this. We're also going to be including Cheerio dependency as well so that we can manipulate the HTML. We're importing the Cheerio on the top by doing an import statement inside this code. We're destructuring the intro and conclusion string and the article body from the inputs. And then we're also calling this function. Same thing as what we've used in the previous one, we're parsing the JSON. We want to look at where the uh, curly braces starts and where it ends. And we're just going to grab everything in between. And then we're just going to call this job to convert this into a JavaScript object when we parse out that JSON. So now we have everything into this variable called intro conclusion. We're going to assemble the article using this function and we're going to be passing in the article body and then the interconclusion object. In this function, we're going to destructure the introduction and conclusion. We're going to be loading the first part of this article is the introduction. That's why we're loading it here first. And from there, we're appending the rest of the article. So as part of this chain of calls, we're going to be appending the conclusion here. But I'm adding in an H2, which has the summon up as part of the header of that conclusion and then plus the conclusion. Once you have the introduction and the article body and the conclusion, we can just return that HTML that we parsed from the body. So once we execute it, we're going to have the complete article that we have assembled that includes the introduction, the article itself, and the conclusion. We're looking good so far. Next thing that we're going to be tackling is we're dealing with the tags. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do that. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're choosing a WordPress piece and then we're going to be taking a look at the custom api calls since they don't have anything that deals with tags here they have create post create page get post details but don't have anything pertaining to tags so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be uh, filling out the url so you have your domain here and then uh, forward slash uh, wp forward slash uh, json wp and then b2 and then forward slash tech and then forward slash tags and that's going to be the endpoint for this api for the wordpress and we're going to be grabbing and using the HTTP method of get, and then we're not going to be passing in anything on the headers. But the main thing here is for the search. Let's go take a look at the API yeah, real quick. All right, so back in the WordPress documentation, when you list the tags, so here's the documentation for that. This is this is how we query the tags. This is the endpoint, and this is the full the URL. Uh, so you can have your domain and and the rest of the uh, URL segment for that API URL. And it gives you the different arguments here as what you can pass as part of the query string when you make this request. There's numerous arguments that you can pass in, including the page, how many numbers of items per page, 
So if you want to do some pagination, if you have a lot of tags, if you want to be able to grab all the tags, you can do some pagination here. You can also do a search here where you can limit your tags based on this search a filter. And you can do also an exclude and exclude based on the IDs. So there's all kinds of different things that you can do here. Going back to active pieces. So I'm specifying the search parameter as part of the query since I want to be able to, to only search if this tag is available for me. So since I'm only adding a single tag to my post, I'm doing a search here. I can just return the list of tags according to my search parameter here. So it's going to go and look for a tag that matches I'm supplying in. And when I execute that, I might have something or I might not. If you have an empty array body, then that means that you don't have anything that pertains to that. And we can, from here, you can see the available tags that's available from your WordPress site. It usually comes with a body and an array. So let's say we change this. It is something that I do have, right? So let's say I want to change this to, I think it's coding. Let me try coding. I think that's what I have. All right. So if I do a query based on coding, which I do have a tag for, it's going to return in this format where you it give us an ID the count, how many posts are using that tag, and then a bunch of information such as the slug, the name. But the most important thing here is the name and the slug and the ID. And that's the only information that pertains to our use case. So I'm going to switch this back to the original one, which is going to be the tag that I came up with from step four. And that's what we're going to be searching the tags for. So if we execute this again, we're going to get an empty array since we don't have a tag yet for that one that that chat GPT came up for us. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a, a code block here. So this one is just going to go through all the tags that came back from WordPress. And we're just going to loop through all the different tags and see if there's a tag that exists. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this one. I'm just going to pass in the, the tags that we received from chat GPT. And then I'm going to be passing in the tags that are, are returned by the WordPress custom API action. And so those are the only two parameters that we're going to be dealing with in this one. So we're not going to be adding any dependency here. We're going to be destructuring those two tags result set. And then the result is going to be added to this result array here. So we're just going to go through all the different tags here. You can see that in the loop, I'm going to go through for each of those tags. I'm going to do a find on W tags based on the name. When I do a find on the name, I want to do a trim and lowercase so that I can make a comparison based on the lowercase strings. And I can do a comparison whether that that tag exists based on the name. So if the tag is found, I'm going to push that that based on ID and then I'm going to put the ID and the name of the tag. Otherwise, I'm just going to put a zero and the name of the tag. So this is the tag that I'm adding. This is the new one that we're trying to create. So if there's the ID is zero, that means that we didn't find anything for this tag. If we do happen to find that tag, it's going to be something greater than zero. That means that we we found the tag. So let's go to the next one. This one right here, we're just going to re we're just going to clear the the tag ID. This is the key identifier that we're going to be using to store our tags when we loop through them. So I'm just going to store it here. I'm just going to clear it just to make sure for testing purposes, I don't have anything here before we loop through the items looping. Loop, looping through the tags we're passing in the array of tags here for 21 so we can loop through them for each pass in this loop we're going to be checking if the tag exists so we're going to be checking if the id is greater than zero so that we're going to be passing in the id which is coming from the loop so we're, we're grabbing here the item and then the id which that's this is what we're checking if the id is greater than zero that means the tag already exists and this is going to be returned by this condition on the left side, if that exists, that means we're just going to add it to the list in the storage using the tag under hyphen ID. And we're going to be appending it to this list and then we're going to be separating by, by comma. So if we're dealing with multiple tags, we're going to be adding it to this storage where we can have a long string of IDs. So if the tag doesn't happen to exist, then we're going to go ahead and create. We're going to do a custom API calls where we're going to be calling the tags resource from WordPress. And we're going to be doing a HTTP post. And from here, we're going to be passing in the name. The, the name is what's required to be able to create this tag. We're going to be passing in 
the, the name of the tag when we execute this code and it's successful, everything went well. We're going to be given the ID of that new tag as well as the name in the slug that was generated for us. In this case, we passed in escape the nine to five and that's going to be the name assigned to that tag. So this ID right here is what we're going to be using when we create the post later on. So next thing we're going to be adding that new tag to the same key uh, here. We're going to be appending that to the list and then we're going to be separating it by a comma, the same as, same as the other part of the, the branch here. So either way, we're going to get, we're going to be appending it to the list so that when we come down here, we can grab the tag IDs based on this key and make sure that we are on the flow. So it's not bleeding into the, multi, the different project. Let's go ahead and execute this. So let's create this tag. Let's say this one doesn't exist yet. So let's go ahead and retest this. So you can see here it's a 201. That means it's been created and then it returns as the ID of 121. And then for our work, we, we tag right here. That's the new tag. And then we can execute this one where it's pending that key to this tag ID key. So once we do that, we can go ahead and go down to the bottom where you can do a get here. And it should have the 121 here, which we added. So depending on what flow or with which part of the branch we're dealing with, we're always going to have something here at the bottom when we execute it. The next thing that we're going to be dealing here, working with categories. Since I really don't want any categories to be added to my blog, I just want to work with the existing categories that I have. I just want to be able to list them and have ChatGPT go through them and, and figure out which category my article belongs to. So the first thing we're going to be doing here is going to be, we're going to be doing a custom API call uh, similar to the previous one. We're just going to be adding the uh, URL here. So the, the domain and then WP JSON and then the end is going to be the categories and we're going to be doing a get B call. We don't have to list out any parameters or headers. We're just going to go ahead and execute this and it's going to give us all the categories that's available on our blog. So it's going to be listing out the same thing as the tags. We're going to get the ID, how many posts is using this category, the description, if there's any, and there's a link to a category as well as the name in the slug and all that information. We're going to get an array of categories. Once we have the list of categories, we can go ahead and add a code here, which goes through all the different categories and parse it out, right? So we just were able to grab the name and the ID for the categories. So we're just adding a simple parsing here So scroll up to the top. So we're just passing in the categories that we received from step 29, where we're getting the categories from WordPress. And we're just going to pass in here and we're doing like a simple map here. So to go through each item in the array and this, and we're just going to pick a subset property, which is going to be just the name and the ID. It's returning back a new array, but it's only going to be returning the ID and the name. So when we retest this one, we're only going to be getting the actual ID and the name and none of the other stuff that's been returned back from WordPress API. We're going to be doing an ask chat GPT, pick the connection, and then I'm going to be using the chat GPT for preview model. And then from here, I'm just going to include that you are a helpful assistant. And then the prompt on the top is I have a list of categories. So I'm essentially just passing in the parse categories that we received from step 30, which is which is an array of categories. And then I'm, I'm asking it to give me the category that best fits this article titled and then I'm passing in the title and then just return a single number of the ID and nothing else. So when I execute this code, you can use that based on the categories that I passed in, it was able to determine which category of that post is under and categorized as. So GPT-4 is smart enough to figure out which category ID this article belongs to when I execute this command. So onward to the next step, we're going to be adding the uh, stability AI piece here. Same thing as when we're creating an image for each section of the article. We're also going to be using the custom API call and we're going to be using this text to image using the uh, stable diffusion v1-6 engine. So when we create a request body for this one, it's going to be the same thing as when we're creating an image for the section heading. We're generating an image on the article that we can use for the feature image. And this is what it's going to be when you execute this code, where it's going to return the base 64 string that which we can use as an image to attach to the article that we're going to be publishing to WordPress. So next step is to add a code, which we're going to be parsing and create a, a proper data URI based on that base 64 string that we received from Stability AI. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this one. I'm just going to include the image data, which is the base 64 string. 
that we receive from Stability AI. So when we execute this code, we're just going to call this one function where we're going to be passing in the inputs.image data. And this one's going to be receiving that as a string. And we're specifying here in the top, we're just going to assume that it's going to return an image PNG. And then from here, we're going to be assembling the data, data URI where we're going to be specifying the data and then the MIME type and then semicolon, then base64, comma, and then the base64 string to build this data URI. And then we're just going to build that out and return it and make this call. So when we execute this function, it's going to give us the data and the complete data, data URI string. The next thing that we're going to be doing is we're actually going to build and create the post. So we're going to be using the create post action as part of this WordPress piece. We're going to be using the correct connection for our WordPress site. And then from here, we're just going to be passing in the title. So let's go ahead and dissect this. So if you go back to the title, we're going to be passing in the title here. So when you get to the, the content, we're going to be pushing in the, the complete article that we generate, which includes the introduction and then the, the article body, which includes the images and the different sections and the conclusion itself. We're not going to be specifying this slug as this is going to be automatically generated for us by WordPress and the date. We're just going to skip up. And then for the feature images, we're going to be passing in the previous steps. Basically, for remember this data URI here that was created, we're just going to be used it, using that as the featured image URL, make sure, making sure that you are on the correct field here because there's two fields here. One is the actual media here where you can select it from your existing one but you want the one where it says your L there. That's where you want to specify the base64 data URI. And then from here, when specifying the tags, you want a comma separated values of the tag IDs. So if you want to take a look at how that looks like, so you go to like step uh, 28, we can see here, I only have 121 ID, but if you have multiple IDs, obviously you're going to have comma separated values of your different tags. So that's going to be what we're going to be using to include as far as this tags field as far as the categories is concerned so when it comes to categories we're going to be switching this to dynamic values so we see here instead of having to pick from the existing categories we're going to switch to dynamic values so we can specify a value that's coming in from our flow so we're going to be using the categories that we receive back from bt we can clean this up if you want to if you want to make sure that it doesn't fail so far it's been working well for me so i don't have to do that so I can go ahead and just pass it in. If you have multiple categories, obviously you want to do a comma straight string, a separate value for that one. You can switch to this to a different status if you want, but I just want to publish it right away. So I'm going to switch it to publish. And I think we cover all the different fields here. Let's go ahead and do a test. Once we execute this, this action, it's going to go ahead and give us a 201. That means that the, the post has been created successfully. And that's going to return us the ID as well as the different dates and the slug, which includes the title automatically for us. And then the publish and then the link of the article where it's been posted. So since we do a test here, let's examine what the posted article looks like. So it has the H2 and then the, the article itself. And then the summing up, since we just did a test, it's just a small article. So that's why we only got a subset of the article. So we didn't get the full article. So you get this conclusion and the introduction, as well as you can also see that there's there's a category that was selected for us automatically by just passing in that ID that ChatGPT was able to come up with based on the article itself. And there's this one tag that was added to this art article automatically for for our work week tag and then the featured image as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other article that I just created and when I ran the whole flow, I got the title here on the top and then I got a nice introduction here. Some keywords being highlighted and bolded. I have the different sections of the article and then there's some images attached to each section of the article and it's added every other sections here. Let's go down to the bottom. You're going to see that there's also a conclusion, which I also attached as part of this article. So as part of this post, I was able to attach a category for me chat gpt was able to figure out which category it belongs to based on the existing list of category that i already have and then also the one tag attached to this post all, all right, right going back to active pieces here so the last part of this flow is we're going to be adding this record inside a table here so i'm just grabbing the current date i'm adding a date helper here which gets the current date i'm choosing this time format which is the month date and year and using the time zone 
where I live. I'm doing a check here whether the record ID exists. So we're checking the webhook trigger body if the record ID exists. Keep in mind that this flow can be triggered from the schedule or from the form. If it's coming from the form, the record ID doesn't exist, which means we're going to be creating it on this part of the branch. And if the record ID was was passed in, which is being used by our schedule based flow, it, the record ID is going to exist, which is going to be falling on the update side of the branch, which where then we're going to be updating the articles list data sheet with some information. So this is what we're going to be passing in the title. We're going to be filling out the article, the full complete article. And then we're going to be passing in the link where the, the article was published and the type of log. I'm just hard coding that as productivity. And then I'm including the publish date. So if we fall into the criteria where it was submitted to the form, we're, in, we're just going to create a record as opposed to update the existing one. So from here, I was doing the same thing. I'm selecting the space, the same data sheet, and then we're passing in the the title we're also going to be including the article and the link to the article so when you go back to ai table here you can see that the the, uh, the previous one that we just worked with we added the article as part of that record id and then we just updated it with the link and as well as the blog and when it was published so that wraps up for this video if you have any specific topics that you'd like me to do a video on please write down in the comments please like share comment and subscribe as always and i'll see you guys on the next video thank you Bye bye